Welcome to Adobe XD. You're going to be very comfortable with this program if you're already familiar with Photoshop or Illustrator or even InDesign. Once you know one Adobe product, it's very easy to adapt to another Adobe product. And the same case is here. And if you're already used to Illustrator, um, coming to this program, everything is very simplified. You'll notice there's not a lot of tools on your toolbar, very few options here on the right, and that's it. It's a very simple system, and it's going to be very easy um, to learn this and very quick to learn this after you've already learned maybe a more complex program um, like an uh, Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. This is going to seem like a breeze. So I wanted to kind of give you a quick little tour using something I've already created for a brand that we were working on on a previous class and lesson called Parson Dynamics, which is an industrial conglomerate. So I have uh, what you see different artboards. So I have the main home page, which is going to be featured here on the left column. And I was able to add new artboards that would be all the subcategories or the other web pages on this website. So we have two main windows in Adobe XD. You have the design window, which we're in right now. And this will show, this is where we put together our designs, we put together our typography, we set out our columns, and we go ahead and set everything up graphically and visually. And then you have what's called the prototype section. So you just switch over to prototype mode by going over and switching over to prototype. And this is how we link all of our um, different artboards together so that we can make a live wireframe. So I'm going to show you an example. There's a play button right up here so I can kind of show you what all these linked connections are doing. Um, so this home page, uh, and I'll show you kind of as we do a web, a little web design together to kind of learn the program, I'll show you how to link everything up and it's very easy. It looks complicated, but do not be intimidated. This is one of the easier programs I've learned in the last couple of years. So all these different um, items link. So this option one, this has linked all the way to this option. So when the user clicks on any anywhere on this button, they're going to go to this page. Same thing with option two. Option two is going to link right down to this page, and option three is going to go down to that page. And the reason we're able to link things together is we can make a living, breathing web wireframe. So we're going to go ahead and click on the play button. You'll notice the play button is right here in the upper right hand corner, and we're going to preview our prototype. Uh, like I said before, all these are linked up together. So I'm going to go ahead and click on option one, and it's going to go right to the, um, the, the link that it's linked to, the artboard that it's linked to. And I can click on the home button and that's also linked, points back to the home page. Same thing for option two. And you can do different transitions. So you notice how I clicked on option two, it slides nicely to the from left to right and you can set up different transitions to have, instead of just appearing, it has nice animated kind of smooth effect. Same thing with option three and that can go down from top to bottom. So this is what we're going to be creating together. We're going to create it all from scratch, and we're going to uh, show you how to work with typography, how to set your assets, which are really important. XD is setting your assets so you don't have to keep recreating the same asset or symbol over and over. And I can show you how they're global too. Let's start and open up a new document and get started. So we're going to go File. We're going to start a fresh new document. And we could do this with any size, but I'm going to do a typical 920 by 1080 web page and I'll show you later how we can make this adapt to a smaller screen very easily but we're going to go ahead and do our design based on a 920 by 1080 website so let's go ahead and click on that particular size and it's going to open up. So we created this first artboard for us and we're going to be creating mini artboards. And to be able to modify this artboard or shift it around just simply click on the name and you're able to shift it around and then you can zoom out. I have my trackpad on my laptop I'm able to kind of zoom in and out to be able to get the size. And this will be very helpful because there's some web designs or some mobile apps that will have 20 to 30, sometimes even 50 different artboards, all transitioning and linking up in different ways. So it's very important to get comfortable with having multiple artboards and, and having kind of an organized system when we start to create multiple artboards. So here's our first artboard. This is going to be our home page. This is we're going to really uh, kind of figure out how to adapt our brand, uh, Parson Dynamics, to the web. So we're going to start at the top. I like to design at the top and kind of work my way down. So starting out with the most important element, which is going to be kind of our nav bar. So we're going to go ahead and grab a shape tool. We're going to just get our kind of a rectangle tool. You also have a circle tool. And if you're familiar with Illustrator, this will be a breeze. So we're just going to go ahead and create a simple bar. That's going to be our nav bar. And I have over here on the right, this is where all kind of your properties are. 
I'm going to go ahead and double click on fill and I can change that color. So I want to be able to adapt some of my hex colors uh, from my brand that we developed. So I'm going to hop back into Illustrator where I was recently working on a poster and I'm going to grab a few of these colors. So here's a couple of um, we kind of go back in time here. It's a little bit of a little bit of a mess, but I just need to adapt some of these colors. So here's kind of a yellow found on this poster that we kind of liked for the brand. And I'm going to I'm just double clicking on my swatch in Illustrator and I'm just going to grab this hex code and we're going to pop it into XD. So I'm going to go to fill and pop in our hex code. So that's going to be yellow. And I'm just going to draw another box so we can put our purple. Pop in here, grab our purple color. Double click the swatch and go to fill and pop it in. So now we have our two colors. And what's great about this is we can save these colors in our assets panel, which is going to be down here on the lower left. You'll see assets. So we're going to click on assets and there's going to be a little pop out menu to the right. We're going to add these colors to our assets. So we're just going to highlight a color. We're going to right click and add color to assets. So it added our purple hex code and now we're going to do the same with our yellow orange color and we're going to add that color to assets. So now if I draw any shape, I can go to my assets panel here on the lower left and I'll be able to recall any of the colors I need. So going ahead and setting up your font styles and everything we need in your asset panel really helps to kind of make the process go a lot quicker when we're doing lots of different pages. So you can see we have our colors assets set up, but there's also character styles. So you can take a particular headline font. If you like that particular size and typeface, you can save the character styles and recall that at any time, which is great if you want to set up all your headers and do your H1, H2, H3. If you ever did CSS, you'll be very familiar with those terms and symbols. You can draw symbols and icons and be able to save those symbols and load those on all your artboards. And what's great is they're global. So if I change, if I make a little symbol of a house and I decide to change that symbol, it'll change it on all the different artboards. And when you have 50 different artboards, it's really nice to have kind of that global stylization where you don't have to change each symbol over and over. And so we'll do that as we kind of finish this website. So let's go ahead and get this stylized here. Um, instead of a yellow bar, I'm going to do a purple bar. So I'm just in my assets panel, this little down here on the lower left. I'm going to go ahead and click on purple to make that a purple bar. And I want to bring in my logo to have it in the center or in the left. So this is where we're going to bring in a few of our assets. So the logo, a transparent PNG logo file would be an asset. And so I'm an illustrator and we did a logo design here for our Parsons logo. And I already have this in two different artboards in Adobe Illustrator. I have a black and white version, but I have them switched out. So I have one in uh, kind of a gray and then one in white. So I'm going to need that white one to go on top of a colored bar. So all I did is just export and I'm going to get these as a transparent PNG. So I'm going to type this logo top. We could do a higher PPI, that's fine, higher resolution. This isn't going to be on the web as of yet, but eventually we've got to think about file size and not making a PNG too high in file size. So we can make sure we don't have super high loading times. But for right now in the concepting design process, it's okay. So we're going to go ahead and bring in that asset. So I'm just going to go bring up my finder, we go to desktop and drag these guys in. So here's our first one. I'm going to go ahead and make them much smaller and then bring in our white one. Looks like I have to do them one at a time. I'm going to go ahead and make him smaller and go ahead and right click and save these to my assets. So I'm going to right click and make a symbol. So that's going to appear on our assets panel now as logo. And I'm going to right click and make a symbol. So these are now brought in as symbols and I can do this logo black and I could do this logo white. And I can recall these logos at any time. So we don't really need those at this moment. I can go ahead and bring this out and I have my white logo. I can bring out the black one if I needed to put it down here. So those assets can be recalled at any time. So now I'm going to double click this and kind of get the right sizing. This is where you can zoom in and really um, get an idea of pixel sizes. So you see how I shift this around, the smart guides kind of kick in and you're able to see the spacing. You see 816, that's how, how many pixels are on the left margin and on the right margin it's 853. So I can go ahead and kind of center that and maybe do both three. And this is where I might need to resize my little image a little bit to make sure it goes perfectly. 
So there's kind of our top bar. We're going to focus more on just kind of getting a layout finished, and we can fine, do fine tune, fine tune details later. So I can use my keyboard keys if I ever want to nudge it just a pixel, pixel or two. I can take my keyboard arrow keys and kind of punch it up or punch it down. You'll notice the the different pixels between the spacing here, and you're able to kind of do some small adjustments as opposed to trying to drag. It kind of snaps a little bit, and you're not able to get the same precision as you can using your keyboard keys.